This video was sponsored by Mel Science. You can get Mel chemistry sets and experiments delivered right to your door. Get 25% off by using the link in the video description below. More on that later. Hi everyone! In this video, I thought we would try playing around with some stationary bottle rocket testing. I really like my propane bottle rocket projects, and I've wanted to try using larger rockets than standard 1 or 2 liter bottles. This means I have to stick them together. I first thought I would do this in the same way as it's done for water rocketry. You cut the bottles in half, dip one in hot water so it shrinks enough to fit into the other bottle, then you rough up the plastic with sandpaper and use a strong glue to stick them together permanently. If you do this right, it works great, but for propane rockets, it's maybe not necessary, so for some of my bottles I took the easy way out and just used tape. It will be interesting to see if this holds up to the pressure. Something else we'll be looking at is the location of ignition. With smaller rockets, I haven't had to think much about where in the bottle I'm igniting the fuel, because they're small. Fire pretty much washes through the whole bottle before it ever leaves the launch pad. With these larger bottles, that might not be the case. I expect we'll see some interesting differences between rockets that are ignited near the open end compared to further away. Okay, first test. Let's see what happens in this double-sized bottle if we ignite it with an open end to simulate what it would be like if it were a rocket flying through the air, and we ignite it roughly in the middle. Since we are igniting this in the center of the bottle, I expect the flame to travel outwards like a bubble, expanding evenly in pretty much every direction. But we'll see what it looks like in slow motion. Okay, so we are going to start filling this bottle with the propane and air mixture from a regulated propane torch, and I'll do that from the back of the bottle to the front, which is why the bottle is just barely hanging onto the end of this pipe right now. And then when I'm ready to fire, I'll just move this backwards, and we'll see how it does. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see what the high-speed footage looks like. Whoa, wait a minute. That is not what I expected. That is going to be really tough to uh, diagnose exactly what's going on. We're gonna do this a few more times and compare the results. Okay, we'll move this back. It's in the firing position and let's see what happens. To my eyes, this looked pretty much exactly the same to the first shot. So let's see if the high speed tells the same story. This is so much cooler than I anticipated. We definitely do not see a bubble form at the point of ignition, and maybe that's due to the open end on the bottle. My usual bottle rockets, when I was firing those off the launcher, that closes the mouth of the rocket. So it's a closed system when it ignites, resulting in equal pressure on the inside of the bottle. I, I expect that's why I see a bubble form in my bottle launcher shots, but these static tests behave totally differently. The next thing I might try is to maybe put a plug in the end of these bottles. I bet then we'll see that bubble form. All right, this is awesome. Let's get one more shot like this and then move on to the next tests. Ready? Three, two, one. Ooh, slower burn on it that time. Well, the slower burn on it probably means that that mix was a little bit propane rich. I probably have to turn the torch down because having the high flow rate, sometimes it doesn't carry quite enough air in to mix with the propane. So pretty clearly that open end on the bottle creates a big effect in uh, how the flame travels through the bottle. It, it ignites much more quickly toward that open end because that's the direction it can move in. The, the, fastest because the lowest pressure is toward that nozzle and it takes a much longer time to slowly travel into the back of the bottle where it's got that closed end and pressure from the combustion is actually making that a uh, uh, high pressure area back there. It's creating a barrier that causes the flame to travel more slowly. Okay, now I've made a plug for the end of these static tests. And now I think we're going to get a little bit closer result to what I expected. I think once I have this end partially plugged, I actually have made this so it's going to launch out after we ignite this bottle. But I think in the meantime, we're gonna see that ball of fire expanding slowly outwards from the center of this rocket. Just gotta make sure there's nothing in that direction that I'm gonna be afraid of this 
hitting when it launches out of the end of this bottle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be cool high speed right here. <laughs> Wow, just look at like that lake of fire effect going on on the bottom of the bottle. It's actually doing this rotational thing where uh, it's, it's kind of flowing from the high pressure back of the bottle. It's flowing through the bottom of the bottle, which is interesting, toward that nozzle. And I wonder if that's, that must be because the uncombusted fuel that's underneath that wall of fire is colder. It's more dense than the flame that's going on above it. And so that would cause it to, to uh, settle lower than what has already been combusted and rotate toward the nozzle on the bottom of the bottle. Oh, that is, oh, where did my plug go? <laughs> All right, here's the question. Do we see the bubble form as I expected? Bubble, okay, partial bubble. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's cool. I see a bubble at the start that's doing roughly what I predicted. It's moving a little bit toward the nozzle side of this static rocket test. Uh, and then, as soon as the plug blows out, we see the same behavior of the unobstructed tests, which is the flame suddenly starts having a much harder time move, moving backward in the bottle. In fact, we see the fire spring forward suddenly as the obstruction is blown out, which shows how that pressure in the back of the bottle, when the obstruction is in the front, the pressure, the pressure inside the bottle is roughly equal. As soon as this blows out, it's much harder for the fire to travel backwards than it is in the direction that the flow is going out of the nozzle. So I guess what we need to do is we need to test uh, different ignition points now. We need to test at the back of the bottle and toward the nozzle and see what the difference is. I have a feeling that putting the ignition point closer to the nozzle is going to cause the bottle to melt really quickly because as we've seen, it's hard for that flame to move backwards. And so it's gonna take a long time to burn and that causes a lot of heat to be transferred to the bottle over that long duration burn time. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. All right, ignition point about one inch from the end. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful slow burn all the way to the end of the bottle. So from this shot, you can see that that differential of pressure that was happening in the bottles when we were igniting them in the center just doesn't occur here. It's all, it's all a steady gradient of uh, flame front traveling through the bottle because you don't have that, that flow opposite the ignition point where you get that, that flame traveling quickly toward the nozzle. It's all just steadily burning toward that uh, high pressure area in the back. And that just, it just makes such an even thrust throughout the burn. This is like an end burning or an end grain uh, rocket which would be like a traditional kind of rocket, a solid fuel rocket. Um, I've made black powder rockets in the past, and this is how you would make an end burning black powder rocket. You'd ignite it right at the nozzle, and then you get a steady burn all the way to the end. All right, so my prediction for this test is that with the ignition point at the back of the bottle, the expanding explosion is going to push a lot of the propane out of the end of the nozzle before it has a chance to ignite. And we'll see a big explosion of propane in the open air out here. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen, but obviously my predictions have already been wrong once before today, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, that is not what I was expecting. The vigorousness of that explosion is obviously indicative that I had the fuel air mixture just right. It's gonna take the high speed to really know what just happened. Okay, I'm gonna try this again, but this time I'm going to make it a little bit more fuel rich so that we have a slower burn and hopefully that will allow us to see the flame effects uh, in more detail because they will happen more slowly. All right. Three, two, one. Good gravy. 
All right, I'm gonna call that a mission failure for the uh, less ideal fuel mixture. I think that was still plenty of oxygen mixing with that fuel. Lesson learned here is that if you want a very rapid burn in these bottles, ignite them far away from the nozzle. <laughs> the high speed is just an explosion, it shows nothing. It shows nothing at all. There, I, there is no way I am going to put an obstruction in this bottle uh, and ignite it from the back like that because that explosion is way too energetic and it'll send this thing probably right through the wall of my barn. I don't really want to deal with that. <laughs> By the way, you might think this camera looks all fancy and expensive, but this thing has been beaten to crap. <laughs> you can see mid-shoot already in this video. I had to take out the power switch. I had to open the whole thing up because the switch failed and solder on these two wires. So to turn this camera on and off now, I have to twist these wires together. So what I think we learned from the previous set of tests is that most of the interesting things that happen with the uh, flame propagation happen when we have the ignition point in the middle of the bottle or toward the nozzle. It's a little too vigorous to see any specific thing going on when we have the ignition point at the end. And it's a little too vigorous for my comfort here in uh, my studio. So what we'll do, we'll fill this larger bottle with propane. We'll do a central ignition point first, and we will also do an unobscured and then an obscured test and see if the effects are any more exaggerated in this larger bottle and see if we learn anything new. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Wow. Now, one thing that I noticed straight away before I even see what the high speed looks like is I saw the, uh, the water vapor deposit on the sides of the bottle in a flame pattern. So I know we got some wavy looking flames toward the back of the bottle. And let's see. And we did. That was awesome. Oh man. Oh, I gotta wait for it to finish processing before I can watch it again. That's the worst part about high-speed video recording. <laughs> I did not mean to hit the trigger. Fortunately, um... <laughs> I did not mean to hit the trigger, but you got to see in that shot how the rate of combustion of propane when it's in this sort of confined state, you don't really have to worry about the heat. I'm totally uninjured, uh, no burns to my fingers or anything. I'm totally fine. Just, <laughs> that startled me. Something fierce. Okay. Oh man, I made such a face in that shot. <laughs> now I'm remembering the last video I filmed with propane explosions. This kind of stuff makes me happy. I'm having fun with this video. <laughs> and in three, two, one. All right, beautiful. That's exactly what we saw in the smaller bottle. On the front end of the ignition point, on the nozzle end, we start to see that rapid acceleration of the flame. It's just blasting toward the nozzle. And on the back, you have that higher pressure area and the flame's just moving slower, just toward that back section of the, uh, of the container. That's it. All right, so we've seen exactly how this works. Let's move again to the front of the launcher. No, 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 no. I haven't done the obstruction yet in this bottle. Let's try that. <laughs> there it is. This, by the way, if you didn't understand from earlier in the video, is meant to simulate what this bottle would be like if I actually had it loaded onto one of my bottle launcher projects. This is like the barrel of my bottle launchers and simulates how the burn should be if I were actually firing this bottle into the sky. Okay, test is ready, obstruction is in place. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Good gravy! <laughs> wow, wow! Oh man, I can't wait to see what that looked like on high speed. We blew the whole front end off the bottle. The tape definitely did not hold. Okay, we have learned that packaging tape definitely does not hold <laughs> for a bottle of this size when there is an obstruction in the nozzle. Wow, that was awesome. 
<laughs> don't, don't try this at home. I, you know what, for this size of bottle, I think that obstruction just could not get out of the way fast enough and the pressure built up too high inside the bottle for this plastic joint to hold. Now, I bet a, uh, a bottle made with the water rocket method with a glued joint would have actually held because the combustion of propane, if it's not compressed beforehand, can only generate like 50 or 60 PSI. And a soda bottle that is meant for carbonated beverages can hold about 200 PSI. So the bottle itself would have no trouble holding this force. I think this tape joint is just too weak. So obviously with the obstruction, that was just too much pressure inside of this bottle when the ignition point is in the center. But I bet when we now move on to the ignition point being closer to the nozzle, since we get that steadier burn as it moves backward into the higher pressure area, maybe we can uh, slow down the burn enough to make the pressure manageable with these taped joints, even with the obstruction in place. Okay, unobstructed test, nozzle ignition point. Let's see what happens. Oh, I can see that even without the slow motion. Nice slow burn, wave of fire moving backwards into the high pressure area in the bottle. Now in this shot, you can see how slow that flame moves. And that is exactly why the end of the bottle melts so quickly in this sort of shot when it was not melting when we were doing the center ignition tests. That slow flame gives a long duration for the, uh, the heat to be acting upon the plastic. And that's how you get uh, the heat transfer, that duration of burn. Okay, I think this will be my last test for the evening. We are going to do a nozzle end ignition, and we are going to have the obstruction in place. I think the tape will hold because of that end point ignition being so much less vigorous than a uh, mid or uh, far end ignition. All right, final test in three, two, one. And the bottle survives. Oh, that is gorgeous. And the bottle survived, which means that it's possible that I could get away with these really easy taped joints on some larger propane bottle rockets if I figure out how to make the ignition be in the proper location in the bottle. And actually with that end point ignition, it could allow for a longer burn time in the air and maybe a longer flight time of the bottles. We'll have to experiment more. We'll have to put these on a real launcher and see how high we can get them with some fins and maybe a parachute. All right. This video was sponsored by Mel Science, who offers subscription-based chemistry sets and experiments delivered right to your door. The free starter kit along with each set of experiments comes with everything needed to make spectacular chemistry happen. If you have young family members, it's a great way to encourage an interest in chemistry while also spending meaningful time together. The instructions are easy to follow, especially when using the mobile app assistant with detailed explanations of the chemistry involved. As experiments are completed, there's more learning accessible through Mel Chemistry VR lessons using the free VR headset that comes with the starter kit. Check out Mel Science and get a 25% discount on Mel Chemistry sets by using my link in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.